You're listening to BFM 89.9, the business station. I'm talking to Raja Atelia Raja Harun, but actually most of you out there would know her fans. You'd know her as Atelia. She's that famous already. She just goes by <laughs> one name. Good morning, Atelia. Good morning, We Norina. do want to talk about uh, your career, you know. Yeah. Um, but aside from the label artist, you're mm. also known as a very savvy businesswoman. So because <laughs> we're a business radio station, yeah. we want to know That's a little bit about that. About, yeah. That's right. We want to know about that aspect first. Let me start and um, backtrack a little bit before we get onto your music mm-hmm. and talk a little bit about um, Imaginex Studios. You, yeah. you were very heavily involved in, in that for about um, six years. For but about six years, I was the uh, executive producer of Imaginex, Kuala Lumpur and Jakarta. Uh, we started out in a very small bungalow in um, Section 17. Um, yeah, and then we are now in uh, the hills of Bangsa, 5,000 square feet of us. And then we and, and we also have another studio in, in Jakarta, which is doing quite well. What we do is we do post-production work for TV commercials, radio, documentaries and movies, anything relating to... Um, audio basically and we also do live sound recordings and and stuff like that now what was the decision i mean like was it a natural thing because like you know music's in your blood therefore you know going into the studio makes sense my mom my mom's a singer and she was um she was um she told me she was a struggling singer in the 70s so she didn't want me to go through the same tracks and she wanted me to study and and have something to fall on uh fall back on to so what i did was i studied advertising and um and naturally, I joined a production house, and later on, I wanted to link it to my music, so I went to an audio house. So I started working in Imaginex, and things got interesting. And I also know that the business in Indonesia is very, very big there, especially for a for a post production house like us. So we, we ventured into that, and now I must say that they're doing very, very well there. Okay, even in the current um, you know economic um, conditions. Yes, it's it's a struggle. There's a lot of competition, but you have to um, try and find work wherever you can. So now we not only do work for Malaysia, we do a lot of work for for Japan and America as well in terms of um, doing posts for animation and and dubbing and and yeah. Right. I wanted to ask because um, you know with a lot of studios they say mm-hmm. well the cost is very high because you've got to carry everything and sometimes your clients come to you and say, well, yes. you pay first or you package because I only want to mm-hmm. pay so much. Mm-hmm. And then you've got to pay the service providers, whether they're voiceover talents and so on and so right. forth. Mm. So it affects cash flow, mm. that sort of thing. So how do you manage all that? Because studios generally find that to be the biggest problem. That is a biggest p- problem. So what we do is we try and get as much um, um, money from the client first sometimes to pay the, the talents. If not... Um, we just have to fuck it up ourselves because our f- most important supply is the talents, the voice, voiceover talents and the musicians. And if we don't have them, we, we don't have a business. So we try as much as possible to not pay them more than three months. And, you know, yeah. But does that also mean that you shift, you know, instead of doing, um, say, commercials which require mm-hmm. things like uh, voiceover talents and whatnot, you shift to doing, uh, say, music or other other forms of uh, production? Yes, yes. Live sound recordings That's right. and outdoor recordings and stuff like that. Things like that you can get cash. So we use um, we use, we use use money from there to, to actually roll and, and pay for things that we have to pay first. All right. Now let's move on to the artist. Uh-huh, right. Yes. Okay. Now how have you, you know, you have a very famous mother. I mean, her name. Okay I mean, <laughs> oh, she is. She Hi, is. Ma. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Well, I can't say auntie. I'm too old to say auntie. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, everybody still knows her. I mean, even now, generation of the name, mm. you just... Well, like you almost, you don't even have to say her full name. You just say Salamia. I really <laughs> wish Salamia it is. And uh, how did you manage to come up from under the shadow of such a oh. famous mother so fast? Mm. Wow, that's very interesting. Because uh, I think, you know, being a mother, she always wanted me to study and learn the business before I, before I, get, my, before I get into it. So what I, that's what I did. I used to follow her around and I knew what I wanted to do then. I wanted to be a singer. So... Well, you started at 12, didn't you? Yeah, I started my first jingle when I was nine. Mm. My first instant noodle jingle, uh, which is still playing now. <laughs> and I'm not getting any royalties Royal, for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
she was preparing me for 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 things like this, the business side of it, how to talk to people, how to get how to get deals, and how to actually understand what is going on in the industry. So, um, I started studying that or learning that at a very early age when I followed her around, singing in clubs, singing in studios, because she used to do a lot of um, jingles. She used to be the queen of jingles, jingles you know, yes. and and that's where I found my interest in post production as well. And then after that, I studied advertising. I studied PR and 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 um, marketing, mm-hmm. uh, which was actually um, she actually told me to do that because she said you have to know all these things because I don't, you know. And it's going to be very hard for you if you don't. And because this industry is a lot uh, is you as an artist, you rely on a lot of people That's like right. the the business people, the PR people, the the people who gives you basically um, the royalties and stuff like that. So you have to understand all this. That's right. You well, have that... to know how to manage yourself. So Okay. But was that difficult? Because a lot of people I know would say, well, you know, it's a left brain, right brain mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so involved in the artistic side of thing. I can't translate that into, you know, dollars yeah, and cents. Yeah, and... yeah. So, how so did it, you... that is very important for a singer, especially now, because you have to um, basically do everything yourself. If... Um, you don't have a manager. Like I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky to have this um, um, company that I set up about a year and a half ago when I launched my album Sanka. What it does, it uh, what it does, it, it is it promotes me and my mom and a few of uh, a few other artists in terms of getting shows, sponsorships, and 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 um, promotional deals and stuff like that. S- and it's also very difficult for artists like me who um whose music is not commercial so i want to support people like this it's very difficult to get recording deals very difficult to get shows because you don't sing commercial stuff for me music is music and good music is good music so i need to support this artist so that's why i started mujik productions right okay i wanted to ask you about that because what is like commercial and not commercial Mm. but People have managed to break through. I mean, I remember when, um, and, and you too, in one of the uh, questions sort of said, yeah, Sheila Majid, when she came mm-hmm. out, everybody's like, are you sure? You exactly. know? And then, I mean, she just became so huge. But that's not the norm. That's the exception rather than mm. the norm. Um, what has to be done in order to develop the market, develop people's appreciation and awareness to make other forms of music more commercially viable? You have to be very updated with what's happening in the business. Like um, now, people don't really sell CDs in in stores anymore. You uh, you upload them and you 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 pay ninety nine cents per track, and and you you can actually do this yourself at home. You know, so these are shortcuts that you have to learn to 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 quicken your steps or to actually get your music across, not just in Malaysia but everywhere around the world, and it's. Basically, the fastest way because you don't really sell C- you don't really make money sell- selling CDs. You make money through your shows, your 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 corporate shows, your sponsorships, your your um, yeah, basically shows and sponsorships. So when you get an album out, the purpose you the reason you do that is so that you can get all these things going. To support that, you need the knowledge and you need to be very updated. You need to know what's going on. And Well, I'm sure, though, that there are people who t- tell you that, you know, you're, you're such a versatile singer and, you know, can you move away from, like, you know, mm. sounding so yeah. jazz or yeah. soulful, yeah. Uh, contemplative mm. type stuff to... Basically, it's, it's um, you have to know from day one what you want to do. You have to be focused and this is what I want to do and... Yeah, I I sing Rihanna or, or or you know Britney Spears. Oh gosh, I didn't say that. Guy. <laughs> For shows, I do, but that is just to to basically um, get the money to get what I'm doing going. Right. So um, I suppose the only analogy that I can think of from from my own experience is that well, you do your jingles or whatever yes. it is, which is the commercial side yes. of it, and then you use that to fund what you really yes. have your heart and your passion in. Mm-hmm. All right. Now having um, said that 
uh, I'm not sure about the corporate shows, and I'm sure you do a lot of those, mm-hmm. but in terms of being out there in the public eye, mm-hmm. um, you don't seem to be as much out there as some of the other, other artists. Mm-hmm. Now, is that a strategy thing? You know, it's like not people really, get a taste of Atelia and really. leave them wanting more. <laughs> I want to be out there uh, more, actually. But I think um, I'm a person who... I like to sing in jazz clubs. I enjoy singing in jazz clubs. I don't really enjoy...